Hi, I'm Anthony L. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery Black Memphis history lesson. Now, look beside me here. At this corner of South Parkway in Oakland, on the north side of the street, if you travel 200 yards north on Oak Lawn and turn left, the second house on Glenview Street is the start or the beginning of black history in the Glenview community. At the same time, if you travel to the second house on the northeast side, once you cross Oak Lawn, on the northeast side, of Glenview, you will see the history of white history in the Glenview community. Now, we can venture to say that the Glenview community is the first African American housing or community integration in Memphis. Know that you got this from Anthony Alfie This is what you must understand about Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee is not only the slave capital of the world. Memphis, Tennessee and blacks were under siege in Memphis from 1909 when E.H. Crump took office until he died in 1954. We talk about the horrors of apartheid in South Africa. We blacks in Memphis had it worse on the Memphis racist boss, E.H. Crump. In Memphis, a Ku Klux Klan leader operated the Memphis Police Department. And this Klan leader, leader's name, graced our federal building in Memphis. His name was Clifford Davis. He was a Ku Klux Klan leader who ran the Memphis Police Department on the E.H. Crump and our federal building in Memphis was named after this Ku Klux Klan leader. In Memphis, Tennessee, Ku Klux Klan law enforcement kept blacks in a condition worse than apartheid in Memphis. For those of you who do not know the history of Memphis, white racist boss E.H. Crump, E.H. Crump kept blacks under siege for decades. I want you to hear a quote from E.H. Crump that tells his story. He, he writes and said it in one of the newspapers, quote, you have a bunch of niggers teaching social equality, stirring up racial hatred. I'm not going to stand for it. I've dealt with niggers all my life and I know how to treat them. This is Memphis, unquote. You see, in Memphis, Tennessee, most of the police department were Ku Klux Klan members. If a black person got out of order, they would just kill the person and nothing would happen. You see, after E.H. Crump died in 1954, Memphis elected a new mayor named Edmund Orgel in November 1955, who defeated the who defeated the Crump back of uh, appointees. Oh, uh, you see, now now that Crump was gone, we move to June. Whereas Church of God in Christ led the push for housing integration. You see. Back during the Montgomery Borsbach, Borsbach workout, Bob Mason purchased a home on Glenview Street in the segregated community of Glenview. His purchase of a home was part of the civil rights movement in Memphis. Let me be clear, if Charles Harrison Mason Jr. tried to buy a house in Glenview while Crump was alive, he would have been killed or even hung. You see, let me give you some background 
of Charles Harrison Racing Jr. He was no ordinary black man. He was the son of Bishop Charles Harrison Racing Sr., the founder of the five million member of the Worldwide Church of God in Christ that has over 12,000 churches worldwide. He was known as Bob Mason, and he was the Bishop of the Church in Christ, uh, Mother Church at Lauderdale in Georgia. You see, while he purchased his home in June of 1956, he did not move into the home until 18 months later, until February of 1958, when all hell broke loose. You see, when he moved into that house, in February 1958, his church was burned to the ground. And on March 3rd, 1958, they set his Glenview house on fire. While the fire department saved his Glenview home, his wife and his family stayed with relatives. The Ku Klux Klan burned a cross in his yard and youth set off a bomb. And he took a note to the FBI that read in cursive, quote, do you remember what happened on Cannon Street several weeks ago? Your brethren in color, it can happen to you. Remember Cannon Street, the man wanted bus integration. He this warning. Cannon Street referred to the murder of Lewis Thompson, shot dead in his driveway in January of 1958. The case remained unsolved. You see, not only did the FBI not help Barb Mason, a woman showed up at his door and she was said she was a friend and offered to assist. She took some checks and tried to cash them where she was arrested. She told the police that she worked as a prostitute for Barb Mason and he was as if he was a pimp. He was arrested, harassed by the FBI, and he went under so much pressure that even in 1959, he sold that house at 755 Benview Street. Now, in, and now in 1958, another black man bought a house at 1801 Glenview, and just about seven houses down, on the same side, on the south side of Benview. Now, the black man also was no ordinary black man. His name was Reverend Aura W. Norworthy. He was pastor of Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church on Carnes Avenue in the historic community of Orange Mountain. Just as the church of Bishop Mason's burned to the ground, in 1958, please refer to an article dated August 7th, 1958. The KKK bombed Reverend Norworth's church right here in Orange Mound. We showed you the video of black people trying to run for office in 1959 and Dr. Martin Luther King coming to Memphis to support blacks running for office. Now, Look at this picture of Dr. King coming to Orange Mound at Reverend Northworth's church, campaigning for Russell Sugarman and being hooked. While this is speculation, I'm sure that Dr. Martin Luther King visited Reverend Northworth's home in Glenview in 1959. They were Baptist preachers and friends. Now, in 1959, another black person moved to Glenview Dr. Joseph Westbrook and Mrs. Westbrook, two prominent educators. He later became assistant superintendent of Memphis City Schools, while Mrs. Westbrook was a project director with Memphis City Schools. Blacks, after 1959, began to gradually move into Gunview and the whites move out. Now, let's get to the white history of Gunview. You see, Right across the street from both Reverend Norworthy House and where Bob Mason lived is the second house on the northeast side of Glenview. 
in the his, is a historic house with a historical marker in the front yard. Look at this historic house and the photo beside me. I have never felt so bad about American history as I feel about this historic house in Glenview. I put carbon in the house next door on the west side. I have always passed up and down this earth for decades. The question that you may ask, why does this historic sign upset me and make me feel so bad? You see, in high school literature, I was influenced by transcendental writers in my English class. I was influenced by the writer Alexander Pope, and I remember a poem he wrote that said, Know then thyself, presume not God to scan. The proper study a man can is man. Unquote. You see, I looked at that historical sign, and the sign brought sadness and tears to my eyes. You see, the marker is about Tennessee Williams, who is noted as one of the greatest playwrights of the 20th century. The marker notes that on July 12, 1935, in the garden behind his house, a group performed Tennessee Williams' first stage play titled Cairo, Shanghai, Bombay. You see, this sign was erected by the Memphis Arts Council and Memphis Business Journal. Clearly, this was a time for white people and white history. If I had a relative at that time, she could have only been a maid or a yard worker. It is unfair that white people have a historic sign in a history of 1780 Glenview. They tell the days of the good old glory of the South, and for black people, it was hell on the E.H. Crump in 1935. Unknown and untold is the story of Bob Mason, who faced KKK, church, and house fire. He's arrested by the FBI. You see, the Glenview Civic Club had a Glenview plan. It was a business scheme designed to purchase properties put on the market in the neighborhood to sell only to other whites. And they began working to keep people like Mason and keep us black folk out. Now, that sign says Glenview Historic District. Yes, for white people, look at Glenview Park. Look at the railroad. If you cross that track and reach Lamar, you'll come right to McLean. You go up three streets and you'll reach Young Avenue. You turn east and you come to the Cooper Young District. This is where whites live and you will see clearly economic disparity and economic segregation. While historic Glenview is glorious days of segregation, white supremacy, racism, and black injustice is our Glenview history, and our story of Glenview starts with Bob Mason and Reverend Northworthy, the first blacks who moved on Glenview. I'm Anthony F. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery black Memphis history lesson.